nobody in greyhound racing has achieved more than Charlie Lister OBE, a man who began life as part of the travelling community and went on to rewrite the record books time and time again. Well, I was born in a little village in New Yorkshire called Rotliffe and uh, I went to, uh, my family were travelling people and I went to school there while I was 12 and then I never went to school no more. And um, I've had dogs all my life. I was brought up with dogs. My dad had dogs. And then my dad was an horse dealer. He used to deal in horses and do, and we used to have horses. And he used to go to fairs, Appleby Fair, and different fairs, buying and selling them and stuff like that. And uh, no, it, it was good. And from the age of 12, when you left school, you've never worked for anyone since, have you? Never worked for anyone in my life, no. And yet you've made a success of yourself from a business point of view, made plenty of money doing what? Yeah, I was, well, doing a bit of wheeling and dealing and buying stuff and buying this. Buy, I'd buy vehicles, i sell vehicles, I'd do anything, really, you know. So it, um, I was, I always was learnt, like, if I bought out for £100, I had to sell it for 200 So that kind of... I worked on that and it didn't, I didn't go too far wrong, like, you know. You've credited a man called Joe Booth for teaching you a lot about greyhounds and sparking your interest. Tell me about him. Well, Joe lived uh, near, near Mansfield and uh, he was a flapping man. And uh, he also had a licence as well, but he used to do a lot of flapping. And uh, I had a couple of dogs with Joe uh, years ago and I used to go about with him with the dogs and we used to take them flapping and all sorts and then uh, then, as it went on, I, I kind of started on my own, but Joe, Joe was a very good trainer. You learnt a lot from him? I did, yeah. yeah. And the dog that sort of put you on the map, I suppose, in terms of your breakthrough dog was in 1985, Glamour Hobo, who was Scottish Derby runner-up. Was that your your first dog that sort of achieved something for you? Mm, he won the Enloe Derby as well, that dog. Uh, he belonged to Travelling Lad, actually. He was, he was a bare-fisted fighter, this kid. Uh, called him Bob Gaskin, he belonged him. And um, he bought him and he rung, me, uh, well, I'm, I'll be telling lies to say I brought him. He, he had him himself and I went to uh, Kinsley one night and they were flapping and I had a dog in a race. And Bob said, I've got a dog in, in, in this race here. And he said to me, would you get somebody to put me 1,500 quid on it. I'm going back a long while ago. So I said, well, if I were you, Bob, I'd cut your bet in half. And he said, why? I said, well, I'm not going to tell you what dog it is, but I've got a dog in the same race. So I said, if I were you, I wouldn't, I'd, I'd, I'd half it. He said, oh, my, my, my dog's he won 10 races on Trotting Island. I said, well, it's up to you. But anyway, when they brought in this dog out and I seen it in the paddock, I thought, well, you're not going to win, note. Because it was like that, it was like a bull terrier, because he didn't know, he didn't know how to train dogs. So anyway, he, he, my dog won it, and Bob said to me, take that dog, dog back with you so you can do it. And we had him back here, and then we had him up, he won Blackpool Derby, he won all, all flapping derbies, that dog did Glamour Hobo. And then we took him up to, he, to uh, oh, the track where it closed down, um, Rye House, he broke track record there. He won the um, Enloe Derby and uh, he got the final at the Scottish Derby, I think it was, yeah. Final up in the Scottish yeah, Derby? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what a good dog he was. Your first classic came in 1993. Do you remember that? Cesarowicz. Oh, yeah, he was a dog, a couple had a dog on Bellevue running and graded, and I used to go to Bell Bellevue and. Uh, he said to me, I've got, I've seen this dog run this now and he run really strong, you know, finished strong. And he came up to me and he said, um, I paid quite a bit of money for this dog, Charlie, but I can't, we can't seem to get it to win like. I said, hey, what's he got on his card? So he told me where to go on his card. And I said, oh, I said, he said, would you take him and see what you can do with him? I said, yeah. So he brought him here and um, uh, that was the first. I had a good bitch in that in that sandwich as well, uh, Spenwood Magic, and uh, he went with that, and uh, he won, he won the he won the final uh, the, the race. It's killing our dream, isn't killing it? Killing our dream. He also won second in the in the TV Trophy at Sunderland, and uh, yeah, he was a nice little dog. He was a, a white dog with a bit of. 
cooler on him. But uh, no, it was, it was a good little dog he was. You've won so much. We need to start with uh, the derbies, I think. Let's talk about uh, some picture first of all. What did that first English derby win in 1997 mean to you personally? Um, oh, it meant a lot to me, really. Um, uh, you know, some, everybody wants to win derby, don't they? And at the end of the day, he went through the derby unbeaten and he beat a good field of dogs in the final. He went through the Scottish derby unbeaten and he went to Ireland. He did get to the final, but in the final he, he weren't right. 2000 and 2001 Rapid Ranger. Did you think he could win two derbies back to back? I didn't think he could maybe win two derbies, but I did think what well, I'd seen of him, he could have won a derby, you know what I mean? An unbelievable feat, isn't it, for a greyhound to win two derbies? Oh, it is. It's, it's hard to win one, isn't it, really? You know. So that night at, at Wimbledon, when he crossed the line in front for the second time, what were you feeling? Well, you just... You see, you can win tennis championships and, and, and the one-off things and all like that, but it's not like winning derby. Any trainer what says he'd sooner win a trainers championship or something like that than the derby, well, the telling lies because there's no way, it's a different feeling altogether when you win the derby. When you walk around with that trophy and, you know, it, it was brilliant really, yeah. So then I guess 2003, you kind of didn't get that moment really with Philo Verdict, which was a shame. No, I didn't get that moment where, no, no, she was a good, she was a good bitch. Um, you know, the only thing is, the dog what, what won it didn't get get it because of, of, of whatever it was, and 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 she got it. But um, she won the Scottish Derby. Uh, she beat two of Pat Buckley's dogs in that. She was uh, she built the track record when she won that, and uh, she won a lot more races besides. And uh, she were she were brilliant bits like you know. So at this point, you've got four derbies under your belt. You then leave a seven-year gap when you head into the 2010 derby with Bandicoot to Pokey. Yeah, I didn't want to win too many on the It's nice to get you under that trophy. It's a, it's a brilliant trophy. And um, as I say, it, 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 the atmosphere of winning, winning the derby, all poor old Wimbledon's gone. But it was a, it, the atmosphere there were, were good. Then 2011, so back-to-back -back derbies for you again, this time with Taylor Sky, who was an incredibly young dog to win it. You've done it with back-to-back, -back, you've done it with a bitch, now you were doing it with a, a pup. Yeah, he came out and he came out and uh, he was a pup, yeah, and he, he won the derby. He won the, the um, Enloe derby, didn't he? He won quite a lot, a good dog. Your last derby winner, remember that one? Sid is Jack. 2013. Yeah, he was a pup as well. I never thought he was going to win Derby when, when I bought him and said to them, the dog's there. But I said to Simon, I think he'll be a good dog. Anyway, we took him to Nottingham one, one night, put him around there, and I couldn't believe it. He, he did 17.55. And I rung Simon up and said, I think you've got a Derby dog. And uh, it turned out that way. It turned out to be the winner, and it meant a lot to you that night. You were holding seven fingers in the air. It's kind of, Do you feel like you need to remind people how good you are? No, not really. Everyone knows it, don't they? I'd hope so. So many wins, too many to single out individually, but seven Scottish derbies. You've become a, a bit of a legend up in Scotland as well. Which ones stand out for you there? Really, I, 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 I ought to say some picture because he went for it unbeaten. And, um, and then he went on to win the, the, the uh, English derby and he, and he finished in the final in the Irish derby. Uh, but this dog, he, he, he came over and they asked me to see what I could do with him and any road I, I galloped him down and I'll go into Scotland. So I said to him, well, before you put him in English Derby, try him in Scottish Derby. And he came out and he won all the rounds and won the final. The other competition that you're just synonymous with, the East Anglian Derby, 12 times the winner. Yeah. What is it about Yarmouth? <laughs> I don't know. Really. You like the seaside? Sea yeah. air? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I used to go, well, I went up there for years, like, you know, and uh, it, it's been a lucky place to me. I, I think I won it first time with um, Swift Band. It's a long time ago, isn't it? Yeah, it's been a lucky track for you, though. Uh, two TV trophies, 96 and 2000, Sexy Delight and Suncrest Sale. That's right. Added the TV trophies to your CV. Yeah, yeah, Sexy Delight, we better at you, actually. 
she was out of some picture. And the other one, uh, Suncrest Sale, he was, he was a good dog. He was, he was, uh, uh, he won th 13 races on the trot, that dog. And he, they used to give us 500 pound to take him to run him on tracks. Because hmm. he was so popular. Yeah. People wanted crowd, to see him. Yeah. He won the Grand Prix. Then he won the TV trophy. And I'll never forget that day, we was in the yuppie bar, they used to call it at Waltham, so at this end. And we were stood in there and there was um, Ernie Gaskin and all them, and the, the, the people who had, uh, I think it was I Night, the bitch. And the owner said to me, he said, oh Ernie says that if I Night, if I Night's the length behind your dog, going round the track, he says, he said it'll beat, it, beat him. I said, if I night sell him behind my dog, that's where it'll stop. And that's what happens. And that's what happened, he won it, yeah. He come from behind him, actually, and won it, yeah. You mentioned Spring Rose. Yeah. She won you a St. Ledger, and you've got three of those. Yeah, she won St. Ledger. She was a great bitch, yeah. Spring Rose. She won the best I've ever had, I think. Uh, she was a nervous freak, though, wasn't she? You couldn't, nobody could do not where could they? And when we, we, we took her anywhere, she used to have a leg, a tail between her legs, and she was, you couldn't have known where. And she, only time she was all right when you walked onto the track to the traps, and she used to drag you to the traps. And she was completely different when she went on track. But she won the Grand Prix in that as well, she did. And then the Oaks, you didn't manage to get that till 2011. So yeah, the won, Perky picked you up in Oaks. Yeah, I, got, I, got, I won the Oaks. Week. Uh, Silverview Perky. I thought she was a right good bitch, Silverview Perky. She she got a good pace and you know she got the trip well and yeah. Good job you got an Oaks, otherwise you wouldn't have had the full set of classics. No, I wouldn't have got one, no. And of course all this meant that you in 2011 received an OBE, which was yeah, amazing was... for the greyhound racing industry. Well it was, yeah, it was brilliant. I mean I didn't, it's the same as I said when I got it, it weren't so much for myself, it was for for, for the ground industry, you know. But what a day for you and your family to go to Buckingham Palace. Yeah, it was brilliant. You proud? I'm proud, yeah. Nice to meet, meet Prince Charles. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> he said, uh, he shook me hand and he said, um, it was not, it, it was a big thing for dog racing, you know, because nobody had ever done anything like this before and it, it, it brought it more on par with horse racing. And, and you know, everything. And then when I was ready to come away, he shook my hand. And he said, oh, you seem to win all the big ones, don't you? <laughs> so he follows Greyhound racing? He must do. Amazing. That, that's what he said, yeah. And you've always trained here in Newark. It would be wrong for me not to mention your latest edition because uh, Derby wins put a smile on your face, but so do Jack Russell's, don't they? Yeah, they do, yeah. And tell me about your, your latest edition. Uh, he's a little... Uh, Papa Neil Crossway, Jack Russell. He's like a little ball of fluff and he's, he's a beauty. He's. And you've actually named him after another dog that you yeah, had here, who is an absolute after, legend. Yeah, Philo Tango, I called him Tango. It's not all been easy for you, has it? You've got lovely wife, Pat, and, and daughter Tracy, and you've got two sons as well, but it's not always been easy for you. You actually, you lost your wife very young prior to Yeah, Yeah, she was uh, about 47 when she died. And how much did the dogs sort of help you through that time? Uh, well, to be quite sure, I was going to pack dogs in at one stage. And uh, then the owner said, you know, what would you do if you pack them in and that like. So I decided then to keep going, you know. How do you think your dad will be remembered? I always say he's a legend, so that's what I would want people to think. Uh, I would want, I would think they, they'll remember him for a, all the races that he's won because nobody's, you know, not, you know, the, the top racers. Nobody I would, wouldn't think would ever achieve what he's, he's, he's you know, he's done. Um, so I would hope that he will be remembered for his, his time with the Greyhounds and especially when he got the OBE, he did it not just, it's not just for himself. He, he thinks of that OBE is uh, for the greyhound industry to, you know, um, to bring that into the um, spotlight more. So I would, I would hope that he will be remembered as um, a man who 
could win lots of big races, really. Yeah. How proud are you of, oh. of him? I can't say. <laughs> um, words. I, I can't say how, how proud I am because I'm so proud. What's been your favourite time in the sport in your life? I would like people to appreciate what I've done. And also, I think one of the main things really was actually actually winning winning derbies and, and stuff and but you know you, I wouldn't people I, if they don't like me I'm not worried about that as long as they respect me for what I've done really That's, as a greyhound trainer as a trainer yeah is it a life you've enjoyed yeah I've enjoyed it I've, I've loved the racing dogs and I've enjoyed what I've done I've been lucky enough to meet some nice people no I, I've enjoyed what I've done and uh, we've had a good life with not wanted for anything and uh, I've achieved things with the dogs, maybe what a lot of people haven't done, so no, it's been really nice.